Hi, I'm Scott. Welcome to Canard Boulevard. While editing this video, I realized I didn't shoot an intro for it, so this is, hey, I'm fixing the airbox on the airplane. Roll the intro. So I'm removing the airbox because I needed access to run the new scat tubing that you see I've put above that's coming in another video. When I did so, I found a couple of problems. Now this uh, airbox is a Vans FAB or fabricated airbox. It's meant for a Vans RV airplane and it is a pressure recovery airbox. I take ram air from the NACA duct goes into the front. There is a K&N filter in the center. It's basically made of fiberglass with an aluminum top. So there's a, uh, a couple different reasons why I took this airbox off. Again, I did a little bit of research and found out that this K&N filter, I, I saw it, it's like, it's not the correct, it seems like it's too small. And it's not that the filter was too small, it shrunk. So this is a, a Vans, what they call FAB, or fabricated airbox. It's actually meant to go on an RV. But it works here for this, this uh, vertical updraft uh, throttle body and it gets you some ram air coming in from the NACA duct. Um, the problem is that first with these filters, when they wa get washed, and in this application it's not being held uh, in a specific place, it shrinks. And so uh, this is scrap. I'm going to have to replace this. Uh, second problem I saw was we got some loose rivets in here, actually several. You can see here, got some loose rivets. Quite a few actually so I may just drill out all of these and redo them and the third problem is that inside here the filter slides around and it wears through the uh, fiberglass and as you can see it's actually worn a hole right through the bottom there of the air box which is uh, no bueno it means I'm losing my ram air pressure out that little thing at least it's on the uh, unfiltered side so I'm going to have to take this home, clean it up, and uh, lay a couple layers of bid on here to fix that up. And then I think what I will do, you know what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, uh, the metal off. I'll take out these rivets, I'll drill them out, and then I'll put in a piece of um, uh, aluminum in here to act as an abrasion layer to prevent... Uh, further erosion of the of the, uh, the fiberglass. It's going to be tough because uh, this stuff is absolutely oil soaked. The whole thing is and it really you really have a hard time getting fiberglass to bond to oil. I'm going to have to really decrease this really well. So yep another problem. If you uh, like solving problems buy an airplane. I gave this a bath to degrease it and uh, it's revealed a couple things. You can see that the inside layer here uh, it has a epoxy skim layer on top of it. It's nice and smooth. You can see definitely where the movement of the air filter has worn through. Uh, that's all going to have to get repaired. There's a hole there you can see but it's actually worn through that epoxy layer in multiple places so it, it's, it's wearing all over the place. The uh, interesting thing was that a lot of the paint actually came off and if you look closely you can see the the bid layers underneath are wet and I didn't do that. That was just how it was underneath the paint and you can see that the fibers are actually visible and exposed so there's, there's just not, it looks like it wasn't wetted out with epoxy enough. And, or they, they squeezed it out too much or what what have you but that has just elevated this repair substantially because now all of this paint has to come off and I'm just I'm gonna have to lay at least another layer of bid over this entire thing to fix that as well as a layer inside to fix this and then some aluminum in there which means uh, I'm probably going to have to remove all these rivets, which is, I guess, not a bad thing, seeing as some of them have failed already. So, what thought I thought was probably a, a quick 15-minute fix has now become several days. Par for the course with airplanes, but uh, a little disappointing. But uh, we'll, we'll get to it. At least I have the materials on hand to, to do this. 
All right, most of the paint came off in the uh, the degreasing wash, and then I uh, braided um, with a wire brush to get most of it off, the rest of it off. Where it's mainly not coming off is where you can see here, uh, it was modified. So originally, when sourced from vans, it's it's solid all the way through here, but the actuator for the uh, the throttle body goes in here, so this cutout had to be made and as you can see where enough epoxy was used in here, it hasn't failed and the paint is sticking to it. What I'm going to do is uh, abrade this with uh, some sandpaper, especially this area here. Make sure the surface is ready to, uh, prepped and ready to go. Then I'm gonna drill out all of these rivets and take out this aluminum piece here, abrade the inside. I'll lay up a new layer of bid on the back side. Once that's cured, I'll do the same to the inside. That will solve the, uh, the hole here. And then uh, once that's cured, I'll flox in a piece of aluminum on top of it. So that is the plan. So I started out with a large drill and drilled out the tops of each of the rivets which removes the outside of the rivet and they're all aluminum so it's not too hard to get through and I'm holding the inside of the rivet so that it doesn't spin in place that I'm just basically drilling off the top and it just the top just falls out and then using a small drill I'll do the exact same thing except now I'm drilling through to the inside to remove the inside of the rivet and you can see the little bits falling there so now that I have all the rivets removed I can pull the top off and there is still some uh, well first I'm abrading it with some uh, sandpaper but then I'm going to clean everything off with virgin acetone because there's a little bit of oil left for, that was trapped between the aluminum and the fiberglass so I clean all that up because I don't want that anywhere near the fiberglass now I'm using a piece of paper to develop a template for the size then I cut out the fiberglass to match got the epoxy all set up, wet the fiberglass, get it all in there, and then uh, set it up to cure. Okay, curing is complete. Now I'm going to scuff it up with some sandpaper because I'm going to bond something else in there, and also flip it over and sand away where some epoxy had leaked through that hole there just to make it even. And uh, the next thing we're going to do is after we clean it up is measure for the back side. I'm gonna use some paper just so I can get an idea of how much uh, fiberglass I'm gonna need. Go cut some fiberglass and we're gonna put a layer of epoxy on there, just wet it out. And then we're gonna put the epoxy on, trim off the excess, and then wet it out with uh, epoxy. Now we'll uh, go ahead and push all the air out, make sure it's fully wetted and even and uh, make sure everything's trimmed and set it aside to cure. Now it's cured. Boy, I wish that happened in real life that fast. So we'll put it back and then we're gonna trim off all the rough edges. That stuff is really sharp and I keep slicing my hands open. I should be wearing gloves doing this, but anyway, so now I've cut off that excess and I'm gonna grind it down a little bit and then I'll take some sander and, and sand it nice and smooth. So now we have a nice even edge. So now the thing has had the inside reinforced where it was worn through and the whole outer side was reinforced. Now I'm gonna take some aluminum and through trial and error, cut a piece that fits where the filter is gonna go inside. That way, it will act as a stop for an abrasion and it will never wear through the bottom of the air box ever again. So I'm gonna start that by first putting some epoxy, wet epoxy on the aluminum and on the fiberglass. And I'm gonna spread, spread some flocks on the aluminum there and around the edges to smooth it all out. And then we'll get some weight on there to make sure that it cures up properly. All right, it's cured. Now we have that aluminum in there. We'll just sand off any of the rough edges from uh, little bits of leftover flocks there. Make sure it's nice and smooth. And uh, you do the rest by hand that it can't reach with the sander there. So that's good, that's good to go. Now I'm gonna drill through the holes because remember I put a layer of bid on top of this and it closed up all those holes. So I'm gonna re-drill all those holes through where the rivets are gonna go. And we'll give this another sanding, get it ready to paint. And I put two coats of a, of a primer on there, followed by two coats of spray paint, which I'm not gonna bother showing here, but you'll see the results. I did not have any red spray paint, so uh, after I 
I put a couple coats of the, uh, the primer on there. I used some flat black. But I, that's, I guess it's flat. It's kind of well, it's black. Uh, a couple coats of spray paint on there. I did actually accidentally put a drip on there, but oh well. It's on the bottom of the edge, and no one's going to see it. But the uh, the bin is uh, pretty much finished. And the next thing I need to do, I do have a crack in this here that needs to get uh, fixed. And then I have these loose rivets that uh, I will uh, fix as well. And I do want to put in some pieces in here so that when the, the new filter goes in here, it gets squished to this shape because uh, with it in here, it's, it's actually not going to do that. It actually comes goes underneath there and then spreads out into the uh, circle shape that it wants to go into. So if I have some, um, as you can see here, where it's been rubbing, so if I have a couple aluminum pieces around the circumference sticking downwards, that will hold the filter in place in the shape that's supposed to be sealed properly against here and uh, sealed properly against the bottom and, and we should be good to go. Time to do some riveting. I'm going to fix a couple of the solid rivets that were holding on these uh, screw anchors, these lugs here that had come loose and weren't riveted properly. So that's done. Those are now nice and solid. Next, I'm going to deburr all the holes in here, uh, the, the rivet holes, because they were really not deburred very well when they were originally drilled. And I did end up nicking my thumb really badly while doing this. This tool is very sharp, so you gotta be careful with that. Next, we're going to create a patch that's gonna double up on that crack there, and I'm gonna rivet it in place over top of that crack to give it some strength and basically make sure that that's not gonna move in the future. It's not really under that much stress, but uh, having this doubler there will help that out. So I am just gonna drill a couple holes and then rivet it in with using, again, solid rivets on the either side of that uh, lug fastener. So the lug fastener and the extra rivets on either side are gonna all be holding that patch piece in there. It'll be pretty solid once it's finished. So you can see me there putting the solid rivets in and now we're done. Next, I'm going to make the little tabs that I talked about that are going to hold the filter in an oval shape rather than letting it spread out into a circle. And I just created four of these, bent them at right angles, drilled a hole, and then drilled a, a locating hole in the top, and then used a, sol a solid rivet to put each of those in. The solid rivets are much stronger. Once those are in, I tested it, made sure it worked, and started putting in all the rivets around the outside to fasten the two halves back together and to complete it. All right, airbox project is complete. Nice and solid. No more holes. Fresh coat of paint. Abrasive layer in here so the, the uh, wear won't happen again. And as you notice, I did put some tabs in here that will take um, this uh, circular filter which tends to go in and then try to spread out and then leave gaps open, which I don't want. And those tabs will then hold the filter in an oval shape, which is exactly the shape that I do want. And that will solve that issue. I fixed a, a crack here, put a doubler on there, some solid rivets. I fixed a couple other rivets that were missing and damaged. Uh, also solid rivets and um, Reassembled it, so it's uh, ready to go. It's about, um, I'd say, probably a half a pound heavier than it was, maybe a pound. I do need to blow it out just to blow all the dust and crap and any shavings I don't still I didn't get out of it. But other than that, it's uh, ready to go back on the airplane. So if you uh, liked this episode of my maintenance blog, oh, and by the way, um, when you are using a uh, deburring tool and it slips. It's very sharp. It, it will cut into your thumb and through your fingernail. Ask me how I know. So anyway, uh, if you liked this video, click like, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you have any comments, suggestions, questions, anything at all, leave them in the comment section below. All that good stuff. That's it. Thanks for watching.